Hi there, my name's Sam Jolly from Productive Nutrition based in South Australia and welcome to the third in a series of how to have a successful lambing in dry conditions. And this session's going to be devoted to talking about some supplementation strategies. So the first thing I just want to talk about are these first two dot points which really underpin the principles of supplementation. The first one is that if you want to increase pasture utilisation, then you need to think about supplementing with grain, with high energy, high protein grain. However, if it's been dry for some time and pasture availability or ground cover is limited, then you need to consider supplementing with hay or hay based pellets. And the reason for that is that if you put concentrated sources of protein and energy into the rumen, the rumen bacteria utilise it and multiply and increase their populations. And so what tends to happen, and you will have seen this, on dry feed paddocks or in stubble paddocks if you're using urea blocks is that when you put those blocks out there, when you put those concentrated nutrients out there, that the rate at which that dry feed disappears markedly increases. So if it's been dry for some time and you're trying to preserve ground cover, then one of the worst things you could do is supplement with grain. However, if you provide protein and energy in the form of hay or hay-based pellets, then the rate at which that dry feed disappears will markedly slow. So that's a pretty important principle to think about when you're trying to manage ground cover in prolonged dry seasons. The next consideration is what are you chasing? The first in this series, we looked at the nutrient requirements of 60 kilo ewes and how they increase as pregnancy advances and how they also increase, that is in terms of intake, energy requirements and protein requirements between single bearing and twin bearing ewes. So the first question is when you're thinking about supplementing, is what is it that they're lacking? What do they need? So if you've got dry feed out in the paddock, which is likely to be low protein, low ME, then the chances are you're looking for both protein and energy, but you're not looking for fibre. So any of your cereal grains uh, will fit that bill quite happily, but you need to get them tested because there's no guarantee that cereal grains will be high in protein and in fact the variation in protein can be really significant between you know 7% protein up to 16 to 17% protein. So from an economic perspective um, getting a feed test is the place that you ought to be starting when you're thinking about supplementing. So the first principle is to arm yourself with the nutrient requirements and then the second principle is to get your feed tested so that you know what you've got and you can identify where the gaps are. So whether or not you're supplementing with urea and molasses, in the case of Queensland or on the east coast, um, you've got um, good access to corn whereas in southern Australia it's more likely that you've got access to legume grains and, um, and cereal grains as a more cost efficient option. Also more on the east coast uh, you tend to have access to cottonseed as a really good source of protein, energy and fibre. So if we just think about some of the characteristics of some commonly used supplements and really you know the list is endless but I've just picked out some common ones um, for this session. So most of your cereal grains are high in phosphorus so that can be really beneficial 
uh, particularly uh, on your subtropical and tropical pastures, which more often than not are lacking in phosphorus. If you're feeding byproducts, if you've got access to byproducts like canola meal, cottonseed meal, any of those byproducts, um, or you know byproducts of the fruit industry, so grape mark or oranges or anything like that, they're generally low in phosphorus. And so when you're supplementing with a calcium source, then your choice would more likely be dicalcium phosphate rather than lime. Um, what's low in calcium? All of your cereal grains. In fact, anything whose first word starts with cereal, so whether it's cereal grain, cereal hay, cereal silage, uh, cereal stubbles or straw, <clears throat> all of those feeds, excuse me, <coughs> are low in calcium. And so when we're talking about pregnant ewes, um, calcium supplementation is imperative if you're feeding um, any of those cereal grains. When you're looking for protein, more often than not, I find that um, farmers get put off um, buying protein sources like legume grains and uh, pulses because they seem to be expensive. And yes, they generally are more expensive per tonne, but what we need to keep in mind is that most of those grains have pretty much similar energy values to your cereal grains, but they're providing an increased amount of protein. So in the case of lupins, you know, you're up around 30 to 38% protein, depending on the variety. And if you're looking at peas and beans, then you're looking at around about 24% protein as you are um, for your cottonseed meal. So if you're comparing that with a cereal grain around 10% protein, then you're basically getting a lot more bang for your buck. So even though they're more expensive per tonne, you don't have to feed nearly as much of them um, to increase the protein concentration of the diet, particularly for twin bearing ewes. So just keep that in mind. It all comes down to the concentration of protein um, and the grams of protein that you're getting um, per, uh, per dollar that you're spending. Um, urea is an extremely useful source of protein, particularly for mature sheep. Um, you tend to get far better, better responses to urea supplementation in cattle than you do in sheep, interestingly enough. Um, and lambs don't respond very well to urea supplementation at all. But you can add it up to 1% of the diet uh, for use, and certainly uh, it will help provide generally a pretty cost-effective um, source of protein. Uh, but don't forget that when you're supplementing with peas or beans or lupins or cottonseed meal, you're also providing a source of energy, whereas when you're supplementing with urea, then there's no additional energy, for example, in urea blocks. So just keep that in mind, particularly if you're trying to increase body condition on those ewes. So if we look at uh, corn or maize, very popular and uh, readily available and cost efficient source of energy on the east coast, um, but remember that it's very low in protein. So as ewes advance in their pregnancy into late pregnancy, particularly if they're twin bearing or getting to the stage of lambing, um, then if you want to enhance lamb survival and productivity, then you need to be providing some sort of a protein source as well when you're feeding corn. And as I said before, um, high energy feeds, generally the most cost effective um, are your cereal grains. So that's it for this series of having a successful lambing in dry conditions. And wherever you are, I hope it rains soon. <laughs>